Good morning everybody. It's very early and we're still in darkness and I want you to think about why do we need the light? And as you think about that question, I'm going to bring a bit more light into the room and I want you to think about what difference is the light making? We had a tiny bit of light and you could maybe see something, but now we've got full light. And that's what the theme of the book that we're going to be looking at together each assembly this week will be. We're going to be looking at a book by one of Oxford's most famous authors. And we're going to be looking at my favourite character from that book. We're going to be looking at a book written by C.S. Lewis, who I'm sure lots of you have heard of, and I wonder if you can guess who my favourite animal is. Now some of you might have said Aslan, some of you might have said Mrs. Beaver, but my favourite animal is a mouse called Reaper Cheep, and Reaper Cheep is in this book called The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. You can actually see a picture of Reaper Cheap in the corner of my book. Now, in The Dawn Treader, Reaper Cheap says that since his birth, he's known about something very special. And I'm going to read the section of that to you now. Caspian explains that he is going to look for seven of his father's friends. He said, that's my main intention, but Reaper Cheap here has an even higher hope. Everyone's eyes turned on the mouse. As high as my spirit, it said, though perhaps as small as my stature. Why should we not come to the very eastern end of the world? And what might we find there? I expect to find Aslan's own country. It is always from the east, across the sea, that the great lion comes to us. I say that is an idea, said Edmund, in an awed voice. Do you think, said Lucy, Aslan's country would be that sort of country? I mean, the sort you would ever sail to. I do not know, madam, said Reaper Cheap, but there's this. When I was in my cradle, a woodwoman, a dryad, spoke this verse over me. Where sky and water meet, where the waves grow sweet, doubt not, Reaper Cheap, to find all that you seek. There is the utter east. I do know not, not know what it means, but the spell of it has been on me all my life. Now, can anybody tell me what you find on the east of the earth. The east is often known as the land of the rising sun because we say that the, the sun rises in the east. And so Reaper Cheap going to the east is looking for the rising sun, the source of the sun and the source of the place that he knows Aslan comes from. The whole of the Dawn Treader is about seeking the dawn. And in this book, Reaper Cheap is going for a search for the light, the source of life and the source of truth, the place where Aslan comes from. And Jesus, when he spoke to his disciple, disciples, said that was a really important thing to do. And we wouldn't be able to do it forever. He said this to his disciples in John, chapter 12. You are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they're going. Believe in the light while you have the light so that you may become children of light. Jesus was saying, I am the light. 
I am the truth and I won't be with you forever. He was speaking to his disciples on earth and he said, trust me, believe in me. I am the source of truth. I am the source of life and walk with the light that I give you. And Reaper Cheap was going on that adventure, seeking the light, seeking Aslan's country. And there were two qualities that Reaper Cheap particularly had. One was the quality of honour and the other was of courage, because it takes courage to seek the light in a world which often loves darkness. And so each day this week, we're going to look at different aspects of Reaper Cheap's courage. But today we're going to look at one particular thing about Reaper Cheap that's really important for us all to realise. We're going to read a little section where we meet Reaper Cheap for the first time, Eustace, who's gone on this journey into Narnia with Edmund and Lucy, meets him and is shocked and shouts out, Ugh! What on earth's that taken away, the horrid thing? He really had some excuse this time for feeling a little surprised. Something very curious indeed had come out of the cabin in the poop and was slowly approaching them. You might call it, and indeed it was, a mouse. But then it was a mouse on its hind legs and stood about two feet high. A thin band of gold passed around its head under one ear and over the other, and in this was stuck a long crimson feather. Its left paw rested on the hilt of a sword very nearly as long as its tail. Its balance as it paced gravely along the swaying deck was perfect, and its manners courtly. Lucy and Edmund recognised it as once. Reaper Cheap, the most valiant of all the talking beasts of Narnia, and the chief mouse. It had won undying glory in the second battle of Baruna. Lucy longed, as she always had done, to take Reaper Cheap up in her arms and cuddle him. But this, as she well knew, was a pleasure she could never have. It would have offended him deeply. Instead, she went down on one knee to talk to him. The first quality of Reaper Cheap that I think is really important for us to realise and see is that he was small. Because courage doesn't have to have big muscles and to be big and strong. Courage can come in small packages. Because courage doesn't come from within us. It comes from someone much bigger outside of us. And we're going to listen to a song in a moment written by someone called St Patrick, who is a courageous man. And he sings about where courage comes from. It comes from Christ, the true light, living within us. And the way in which, in the whole of life, he surrounds us behind and before in all that we seek to do as we follow him. Christ be with me, Christ with Christ be me. 
doesn't have to come in big packages because courage comes from you and all those who hope in you find strength and courage from you whether we're adults or young children or older children thank you Jesus that your light gives us the courage to walk forward in hope with you amen So today we start a new topic, thinking about Oxford authors. And I know that some of you will be looking at some things from J.R.R. Tolkien. Other of you will be looking at The Wind in the Willows and we'll be looking at Narnia in our assemblies this week. This afternoon, we've got a science project that will go up on the blog soon. It's about ducks, because one of the famous poems from Kenneth Graham's Wind in the Willows book is the Ducks Ditty. And so we're going to do some science inspired by the Ducks Ditty today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Enjoy your hangouts with your teachers shortly. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow with more tales from Yupichi.